So for this build, you're gonna need three pieces of software. Win32 Disk Imager, um, SD Formatter, and uTorrent. So let's start with the first one, which is Win32 Imager from SourceForge. All right, after clicking on a link that I will provide in the description, just wait a few seconds and the download will pop up automatically and start to download. Once the download is complete, go ahead and click on it and install it. This is a really quick install. When you get to the end of the installation, it's gonna ask if you wanna launch it or not, go ahead and uncheck that and uncheck the readme and hit finish. So now let's move on to the next piece of software, which is the SD card formatter. Again, this link will be in the description as well. So on this page, you're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom and click accept. The download will pop up automatically after that and it'll be inside of a zip folder. I'm just gonna download, go ahead and click on it. And I'm like, what I like to do is go ahead and just extract it to the desktop. Right. Now that it's on the desktop, we're gonna go ahead and install that as well. Just like the previous one, the installation is really quick. It's gonna go through really fast. All right, so uncheck launch again <clears throat> and hit finish. So the next one will be uTorrent. Do not click on the bluish green button. You're gonna scroll down and you're gonna click on the, the solid like lime green green button. Click on that and then you're gonna download the basic edition all the way to the right. When it's on download, you're gonna follow the same steps. But for this one, they have a little bit of hidden software in there so make sure you don't just click next a bunch of time. Times you're gonna end up with some software you don't want. So you're gonna hit um, next here and next here. And then hit that you agree. Now decline WinZip, unless you happen to want WinZip. And then uncheck that you agree to add um, where software. And then hit next. You wanna hit next and next, keep all that stuff the same. And the same thing with this, I'm gonna ask if you wanna launch it. Go ahead and uncheck and launch and hit finish. All right, we're good. All three of those pieces of software are installed. Now we're gonna to go to our, our disk image website to download our build software. All right. So I've used three different builds from this one. And my favorite build is the one I'm gonna show you guys how to do is 128 uh, gigabytes. And I prefer to download the torrent version of it because torrents are more reliable than um, the direct file because if you lose connection or something like that, you have to start the file all the way, all the way over. With torrents, it'll just stop, start back up where it left off. That's why I had you guys download and install uTorrent, all right? So we're gonna go with the newest one at the top and you're gonna click on the link that says torrent. But before we do that, I wanna show you, if you go into the, the readme portion, it'll give you some um, a, a brief rundown as of what the build is like um, what the layout is going to be like in the entire the, the, the videos on the average between 10 and 20 minutes that can let you kind of know what you're downloading and what you're getting and they give you a brief list of games that are going to be inside of that image file so you so you know what you're getting so that's one of the things i really like about this this website oh yeah we're going to go and click on and download that All right, now that that's done downloading, we're gonna go ahead and click on it, and it'll open up automatically in uTorrent. So I already have the file downloaded, but I just want to show you guys what it looks at, what it looks like. It's gonna download. Um, it's gonna be. It's gonna download looking at like one file, but it's actually a series of um, compressed folders. Once it's done downloading, you just right click on it and hit open container folder and you will see a series of compressed files like this. You just right click on any of, any one of them, just hit extract. And hit extract here. 
So once it's done extracting, it's gonna be in the ISO file. So I'm gonna go to the folder that I keep it in to show you guys what that looks like. Now I extracted the file to another hard drive because it had more space on it. So now that that file is extracted into ISO, this is where the Win32 imager comes into play. So go ahead and go to your start menu and open up Win32 imager. Click yes to uh, let it start up. And then from there, you're gonna make sure you have your, your drive in. So your SD card, your 128 gigabyte or higher SD card plugged into the computer. And over to the right, you will see a drive ladder. And then next to the drive ladder, there's a little folder. You'll click on a folder and you will search for your ISO. So after finding your ISO, you're gonna go ahead and click on it, open it up. And then, so click right then yes and it'll start to write now you might be wondering where the sd card formatter comes in that comes in if anything goes wrong with this part of the process the only way to truly format and fix your card is with the sd card formatter if anything goes wrong because what happen is both your drive bits get separated into two volumes and the sd card will delete the second volume and wipe the whole thing correctly or it'll just start reading as a corrupt SD card and you won't be able to access it. You'll get a lot of issues like that. So that's just like an, a just in case. That's why I have people download it as a just in case. So as soon as the, um, the writing is done, like you see here, click OK. Now you can remove your SD card, put it in a Raspberry Pi, and that's it for the software step. So, so right here, I am printing out the control ports for the N64. This part can be found on Thingiverse. I will send put the link in the description below. I printed this part on my Mini Delta. And I printed a few other parts on my CR10 that you'll see coming up next. Now this part right here is actually the back portion of the N64 where the large brick will usually go for the power supply. This blocks it off so that you can run your own cables through without having, without having that large ugly divot in the back because it will leave a large square hole if you didn't have this to fill it in. Now let's go ahead and start taking this puppy apart. First thing you're gonna do is remove the cover for the expansion slot and then remove the expansion cartridge from there you flip it over and there's a total of five screws one in each corner and one in the middle of the front of the console under it after those are removed go ahead and remove the little clasps protecting the other expansion port that never gets used for anything and remove the top lid. From there, there's multiple screws. I did not count. Just go through and remove every single screw. And these screws will be flathead. Unlock, unlock the ones under it, the ones under the console, those five I spoke of earlier, you need a special screwdriver. And I'll include that in the description. But the rest of these are just normal Phillips, or you can use a small flathead to remove them. Remove the first bracket after removing all the top screws. And there will be four more screws on the edges to remove as well. After those four screws, there will be two more close to the expansion slot near the front of the console. And those are slightly smaller than the normal Phillips. Just lift it up and out, remove the plate, remove the two brackets for the plate. And I just removed this because I wanted to see the components, so it's not necessary. So after that's all gutted, the only thing you will be using over are some of the screws. So I just kept all the screws out. 
Now go through if it's dirty and thoroughly clean it. I'm just using 99% isopropyl alcohol. Removing any type of um, crud, sticky stuff, labels, all that good stuff. To get it as neat and clean as possible. This is just a, a print removal tool for my 3D printer. That I'm using here, but you can use, I mean, whatever you want. Now these are front control ports I was speaking of earlier that I printed out. Had to do a little bit of um, custom scraping to get it to fit in. And they fit in nicely. I did a test closure. Closed well. And I'm moving on to the Raspberry Pi mount. I did not record this being printed. Now this mount is actually not, it fits all the screw ports for it to be mounted inside of the actual case itself properly, but the size where the Pi is supposed to go, the screw um, holes do not line up. That was a little disappointing. After putting the rear panel in place, I did another test fit. You should do the same as well whenever adding new components to make sure everything still sets together flushly. And that worked out well for the ports and the rear. All right, took it back apart and now I'm gonna go ahead and start wiring up one LED light to replace the one that's the front of the Nintendo 64. I went with the purple LED. All I'm doing is soldering a 10K resistor to the positive side of the LED, which is the longer part that protrudes out and wiring a red cable for a positive to the positive side and the black cable for negative to the negative side, which is the shorter side of the LED. After that, I wired it to the coinciding pins on the Raspberry Pi itself, the five volt pin. I will leave a link in the description to let you know where the pin is at. There is a diagram online on a, a Raspberry Pi website so you can know which pin to use for things like this. After that, I have a HDMI extension cable. I'm cutting shielding off the HDMI extension cable to fit through the holes and easier and to make it a little more flexible. And this will protrude out the back of the N64 so I can easily plug it into a television. After placing the rear bracket back on the back, I ran the HDMI cable through to see if it comfortably fit. And I taped off some of the frayed wiring with some Keptum tape. From there, I wired the small fan that I had laying around to help keep it cool after placing a heat sink over the Raspberry Pi processor. Because I do plan on overclocking this, so some systems like Dreamcast will run a little better. So if you're gonna overclock it, make sure you have a fan and a heat sink because this does void your warranty. Using a couple of screws, I just screwed the fan back directly into the heat plate. And then I did a test boot to make sure the fan was running directly from the Raspberry Pi. And I did a test fit with the N64. Again, I will leave the pin layout for which um, GPIO pins to use for the fan and for the LED. From there, I wired up four USB extension cables that are 10 feet long. And I used a little hot glue to hold the LED in place and to do a little bit of wire management. 
From there, I took the, the USB ports that I printed and I cut slits into them so the USB cables can um, seat through easily. I was going to cut the shielding off the USB cables, cut them down and run them through properly. Um, just like it was done on Thingiverse, but I decided I wanted longer cables and I didn't want to cut anything down. Um, and it cut the time probably more than the half. Now it's time to do a test boot before sealing everything up. I want to make sure everything runs smoothly without any issues. So the game I decided to go ahead and test out is Crash Bandicoot. So everything is running great. Time to improperly power it down by just yanking the plug out. And it's time to get everything all sealed up. Now I use just a little bit of hot glue to hold these in. A couple of dabs just so I can easily close without any issues. Because they do wiggle a little bit until it's completely closed and they're secured really tightly between the grooves that are already set in the 64. So all I'm doing is the reverse from what we did earlier. Let's run all the screws in. I place the HDMI back into, um, into place snugly in the rear. Put the bottom expansion slot lid back on and using my 3D pin, I sealed around the HDMI hole just to make it more secure. This process took about six minutes, maybe a little less. I ordered a total of four Metricom controllers. There were $11.99 on sale on Amazon. They are Bluetooth compatible, but I did have issues connecting them via Bluetooth. So I went ahead and just stuck with the wire route because it has an option for both. They actually have the same setup as an Xbox 360 controller and emulate it on any PC as well. It reads as an Xbox 360 controller and it has a comfortable fit like a PlayStation controller. All right, folks, that's all for this build. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.